Hello, geometry student, and welcome to Writing the Equations of Circles by Completing the Square. What I'm going to provide you is, is with two um, situations where we have to get the equation to look like um, this. And I'll go ahead and write that here on the title screen here. And that's, um, remember, it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Remember, that's the standard form version um, for a circle. Okay, so our goal is to make the equation that is given to us look like um, that. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and go over the two examples that were previously given in notes. So let's go ahead and start that now with our first example, which is number three. Example number three, however, just understand that it's um, the first example of this video. So. Um, the question is to determine the center and the diameter for the circle given with this given equation. And so, as you can see, we have this equation, and the equation does not look like our standard form, which, again, I'll remind you, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay? Now, before we go any further, what you want to do is you want to basically get all the x's and the y's, anything that has an x or a y um, on it on one side of the equal sign. And if it doesn't have an x or a y, it needs to move to the other side. So in this case, what I see is I see an x squared, I see a negative 10x, I see a plus y squared, but this says minus 11. I need to move that because it does not have an x or a y, it has no variable on it. So in order to move it, what I will do is I'm going to add 11, since it's the opposite of minus 11, um, to both sides. And so now, um, hold on, I'll move this up. This line's going to come in later. Sorry about that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the um, 11 to both sides. And so now that's going to give me x squared minus 10x plus y squared equals, and then 0 plus 11, of course, is 11. All right, so now we have um, all the x's and y's on one side and then the numbers, constants, whatever, on the right side. So now what we have to do is we're going to now separate the x's and the y's. What I mean by that is, is that I'm going to basically put x squared minus 10x on one side. And now this is where this line comes in. So let me bring the line back over here, if I can. Oh, there we go. There's our line. So there we go. So I'm going to separate the x squared minus 10x. So that's, that, that has all the x's. And then on the right side, I mean, on the right side of this line I just drew is going to be um, y squared. So I put y squared over here. And then um, I still have my equal sign and then 11. Okay, so I can, you know, I can separate that as well. Okay, so we have our um, separations. So we separate the x's, we separate the y's, and then we have the constants. Um, keep in mind, of course, that there's a plus sign right here. And then, like I said, this one has an equal sign um, that separates the other two sides of the equation. Now, what we're going to do is we're now going to do what I said at the beginning, what is called completing the square. That's what we're about to do, completing the square. What I mean by completing the square, by the way, means is that we're going to get it to look like a term or a parenthesis squared, not parenthesis squared. And we do what is called a perfect square trinomial. Now, not to go into too many details with that, but that's basically what we're doing. We're basically creating something into a perfect square trinomial so that it becomes a parentheses squared, which is a binomial square, basically. Now, the way we're going to do this is this. We're going to do something that I like to call a B table, OK, a B table. And on this B table, what we're going to do is it's going to be a three column table that looks like this. And the three columns will always start the same way. The first um, column will be the, will be the B. The second column will be the half of B, and the last column will be what's called half of B squared. Now, B is a number that we're going to need to determine, and once we have figured out what B is equal to, then we'll be able to complete the rest of the table. Now, what is B? B is going to be the number that is next to a variable that is not squared, okay? A variable that is not squared, a non-squared variable. So what I look at here is on the x's, I have a negative 10 and an x. That is the x here is not squared. So the x squared is it's squared. But this x right here is not squared. So we look at the number that's beside the x, and that's going to be a negative 10. 
So I'm going to place negative 10 in for B, as in my B table, this is my X. Now normally, now as you'll perhaps see on the next problem that we do, I would also see if there was one for Y. But notice that Y is just Y squared. There's no non-squared variable for Y, so we don't have to worry about that Y. So right here, we're gonna have X, and for X, we have B is negative 10. So all we have to do at this point is just complete the table by figuring out what the rest of this is. So the first part, it says half of B. So basically half of B, half of B is half of negative 10, which is gonna be negative five. And then we take negative five, and we're going to square that because it's half of B squared. And so negative five times negative five is gonna be a positive 25, okay? So now, now that we know what the half B squared column is, I'm going to circle that. That 25 that we just got is going to, is going to add to the X um, portion. So I'm gonna just put this as plus 25. Now, because we put plus 25 on this side of this equal sign, we have to do the same thing on one side of the equal sign that we did on the other. And so therefore, we're gonna also put a plus 25 um, after the 11, okay? Because we did it on the um, left side of the equal sign. Now, here's what happens. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna draw, bring down this equal sign. And with this x squared minus 10x plus 25, what I can do now is, this is what's called a perfect square trinomial. And because the perfect square trinomial, we can actually rewrite it as the following. We can write a parentheses, kind of like this, squared. And what we'll do is we'll place the letter that we're using, the variable that we're using, which is x. And then what we do is after the x, we look at the B, back of the B table and look at what is the half B column, like whatever number is in half B. So half B in this case is going to be minus 5. So I'm going to put a minus 5 after the x. Okay? So right now we have x minus 5 squared. Then we write a plus. And then remember, since y didn't have anything in the B table, we're just going to drop it down, so it'll be plus y squared. And then we have 11 plus 25 on the right side, so we actually add those together, and that's going to give me 36. So now, this equation that we have here is now in standard form because we do have um, a parentheses showing, and we have everything, and we have just s and y's over here, and then just um, a number right here, 36. So, now that we have our equation in standard form, we can now write down our center and our um, diameter, or at least we can find the diameter. So in order to do that, we're going to, of course, start off by writing down our center. So here comes our center right here. And remember, to write the center, we look at the x coordinate, at the x um, portion, and we do the opposite of the number that we see. So the opposite of negative 5 is going to be a positive 5. So we'll put a positive 5 um, right here. Then y squared is going to be um, y squared is going to be the um, the number that we have um, here. It's going to be opposite, so it's going to be a zero. So it's going to be five comma zero. Okay. Then the next thing we do is we look at the thirty six and we determine um, that that is our r squared. So we just write this as r squared. So r squared to thirty six, and then we take the oh, sorry about that. We're going to take the um, r squared. And uh, we're going to actually make it a square root. So we're going to square root 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So we put r equals 6. And then since we're trying to find the diameter, all we have to do is take 2 times the 6. And we're going to get 12. So therefore, the diameter is 12. So right here, the center is 5 comma 0. The diameter is going to be 12. And that's what we need to do to find the problem. But we had to, but we had to do complete the square in order to make that happen. OK? So if you can see him by, we'll do the next problem after um, a short intermission. All right, here we go. With the second example, which I call example B, okay? And we're still looking for the center and the diameter for the circle with the given equation. So we kind of have an idea, hopefully now, after we split the first problem, that we have to complete the square. Now, what you do is you look at your equation, look at your left side, and see if there any, is there anything over here that is not an x or a y, um, that has an x or a y in it. And so therefore, minus 49, which I see here, is not an x or a y. So we have to move that over by adding 49 to both sides. So that's going to leave us with x squared plus 16x plus y squared minus 14y. And then it's going to equal to 0 plus 49, which equals to 49. 
Okay. Now, because we have everything um, with S and Ys on the left side and just constants, whatever, on the right side, we can now go ahead and do our separation. So we're going to separate the x's, so x squared plus 16x, um, from the y's, which is y squared uh, minus 14y, okay? And we're going to, of course, put my separation here and just write equals 49, okay? Now, because both of these x's and y's have an extra term on it, that means we have to do a B table for both X and Y, okay? Because now we're going to do the complete the square process. So again, I'm going to write my B table. And do you remember what the B table looks like? Okay, remember it's B, half of B, and half of B squared, okay? All right, so now all we have to do is figure out what B is for X and for Y. So what we'll do is we're gonna put our X right here and we'll put our Y right here because we might as well just use the same table um, for both and we're just gonna just complete the table um, using those numbers. So let's start with the B for X. So the B for X here is positive 16. So I will put a positive 16 here for B. And now I'm gonna complete the table for that. So half of B, which is half of 16 is gonna be eight. And then half of B squared is eight squared, which is gonna be 64, eight times eight is 64. So there's my um, half of B squared for the, the um, X. And I'm gonna circle that. We'll deal with that in just a moment. Let's go and do it also for the Y. This says negative 14. So now negative 14 is gonna be put right here. So minus 14. And now we're gonna do half of B. So half of negative 14 is gonna be a negative seven. And then we have to square negative seven. So negative seven times negative seven is gonna be a positive um, 49, okay? Um, I don't know why I put the plus there, but it is what it is. It is positive 49, okay? And so I'm gonna circle that one as well because that is my half B squared for, um, for the um, Y's. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the 64 that I got for X and I'm going to add that to the X part right there, plus 64. I'm also going to take the plus 49 that I got for the Y and add that to the Y portion, like that. But because I added both a 64 and a 49 to the left side of this equal sign, remember there's an equal sign here, we have to add those same two numbers to the right side. So that means I have to add 64 plus 49, okay? So because remember we had 64 for the X's, we added 49 for the Y's, so we added those together to get that, okay? All right, now that we've done our addition, we now just need to um, turn it into our standard form equation for a circle, or at least attempt to uh, turn it into a standard form equation of a circle. So remember, that's gonna be X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. That's what we're trying to do. So. What we do for the X's, remember, is we're going to write our parentheses. So we write our parentheses just like this, squared. And we're going to write the letter X right here. And then whatever we have for half a B, half a B is going to be 8. So we're going to put that after. It's going to be plus, positive 8 because it was plus 8. So plus 8, positive 8, that's what goes in the parentheses. Then remember, we're going to have a plus sign right here because we um, have a plus sign when we separate right there. And now we change the Y's to its um, parentheses. So we make our parentheses for that. And we're gonna put Y, and this time we look at the half B for Y, which is a minus seven or a negative seven. So I put that after the Y. So it'd be Y minus seven and then square. And then we're gonna write equals. And now we need to add 49, 64 and 49. Well, um, you can check your calculator, but I believe that it's, um, let's see, 49 plus 64 is 113 plus 49, I believe it's 162, okay? So hopefully I'm right about that, but I think I am, okay? So it's gonna to equal to 162. So guess what? We have our equation in standard form. We have our parentheses for X, we have our parentheses for Y, we have our squares, we have our um, constant term over here. Okay, so we have our equation in standard form. Now, all we have to do at this point is write down, of course, what our center and our diameter is going to be for this circle. Well, the center, of course, is pretty easy because remember, you'll take the center 
by writing down the coordinates for um, the center. We look at the x-coordinates. To find the x-coordinate, we look at the number after the x, which is positive 8. Remember, we did the opposite of that. So it's going to be a negative 8 right here. So it'll be negative 8. And then we have a y minus 7. So we look at the opposite of minus 7. So the opposite of minus 7 is positive 7. So right now we have our center. Our center is negative 8 comma 7. So we've, we have found that. So now we need to find the, um, the diameter. But in order to find the diameter, we have to use this number here, which of course represents our um, r squared. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's what we'll do. So right now I'm just gonna write down that r squared equals 162. And since r squared equals 162, that means that we can find r by taking the square root of 162. Now, as some of you hopefully know, the square root of 162 um, is not a perfect square, okay? Um, we cannot square root it and get a um, whole number. So that means that we have to simplify it. So what do we do? We simplify 162 by doing a factor tree. So we have a factor tree for 162. So now we're going to break it up. And hopefully, if you do it this way, it'll make it a lot easier for you. Because I know that 162 is 2 times 81, okay? And so 2 can't be broken up, but 81 can. And if you think about it, 81 is just 9 times 9. And believe it or not, because 9 and 9 is a pair, we can go ahead and stop right there and circle the pair of 9s. The 2 that we see here, of course, will be boxed in because it has it's unpaired. So finally, all we have to do is write down the following. R is equal to radius. Um, the radius is going to be 9. And then we put the square root of 2. Because remember, 2 is unpaired. So we put that inside the square root. The 9 goes outside because it was one pair of 9s. So that's our radius. So finally, the last thing we do is we're going to find the diameter. Remember, the diameter is just 2 times 9 square root of 2. And so um, nine, 2 times 9 square root of 2 is going to be 18. So it'll be 18 square root of 2. So we have found the diameter for this circle. We have found the center for this circle. And we did it all based on the fact that this equation given was not um, in our form. But we were able to do that in our form because um, we did complete the square. And that's what that B table comes in. All right. So hopefully this will help you um, solve problems um, like this. Um, there will be a problem, at least one problem like this on the problem set. There will also be at least one problem like this on your on your test that will be coming up in the near future. But thank you so much for watching this. And um, please feel free to comment, um, like it, whatever you want um, when, you, when you see this. Um, but in the meantime, again, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, um, and seeing this. So until the next time, take care. And as always, stay safe.